Joining me now is Chargers offensive lineman Joe Barksdale. Joe, welcome back. Thanks for having me. Again. What, do you, yeah, what do you think when you look at the schedule this season? Um, you got to take it one game at a time. I think sometimes, you know, people look too far in the future and all that that brings is stress and worry. So, you know, you can only control the closest game and uh, that's the Kansas City Chiefs. So that's what I'm focused on. That's what you guys always say. One game at a time, one mm -hmm. game at a time, at least publicly, maybe not privately. Uh, any of the big changes that I can think of for your team this season is Mike Pouncey is coming. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. You got to be. Yeah. We um, we actually trained together um, before the combine. So and, you know, played against each other in the SEC. So um, when I heard that Mike was joining the team, I was pretty excited. Um, obviously, he's been at the facility the last couple of days. And, um, you know, great guy, uh, great athlete, and we're happy to have him. Let's hear what he has to say. We got a little clip of him. Here he is. Well, I trained with uh, Corey during uh, the off seasons, um, uh, Joey Bosa. You know, I know uh, Joey Barksdale, we trained coming out. I know a lot of the guys on the team through just playing them throughout the years. And so, you know, I already feel like I'm at home. The weather's awesome out here. I'm, <laughs> I'm excited to be here, trust me. County's got to love that weather coming into it, right? Because it's yeah. been really nice. OTAs really, there was, it wasn't too hot yet for you no. guys. No, no it's, it's been, been nice great. down it's at the great. facility. Yeah. yeah. How's it feel to be back out there on the field doing a little bit of work? It feels great. Um, you know, obviously we were all disappointed that, you know, we didn't get where we were trying to go last season. But, um, you know, it's a new year. Uh, we're putting last year behind us, and, you know, it feels good to be moving forward. It, you guys were close, though. You were close last year. I thought maybe you might pull it off after a bad start. Yeah. Um, you're here because you're going to be an honoree at the Erasing the Stigma Leadership Awards coming up on April 26th, which is basically the stigma of mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are you talking about? Um, I mean, to be succinct, pretty much uh, letting people know that they're not alone. I know that there's a stigma involved in... Um, you know, mental illness, especially in the uh, African-American community. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to help save as many lives as I can because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Yeah, you know what? There have been a couple players, and I've noticed it. DeMar DeRozan put a tweet out earlier this season, the basketball player. I think we have that. We can show it to you. Kevin Love, the basketball player on the Cleveland Cavaliers. There's DeMar. This depression get the best of me. The minute DeMar put that out, Kevin Love, a basketball player with the Cleveland Cavaliers, came out and wrote a big story in the Players' Tribune and said, for 29 years, I thought about mental health as someone else's problems. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that probably inspires you when you see those kind of things. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, like I said, it's really not about me. It's about helping other people. What's so. your story, though, that you got involved? Um, I just, I would say after a suicide attempt last year, uh, it was really the first time that I recognized that I had a problem. Wait a minute, time out. After a suicide attempt last year, what yeah. happened? Um, well, you know, I was injured, and <clears throat> I'm not used to being injured at all, even dating back to high school, and uh, didn't know how to handle it. Um, was obviously suffering from a mental illness that I had not um, acknowledged. And, uh, you know, you just feel hopeless, helpless, and insignificant. You start to wonder if you even deserve to be alive, you know, that kind of thing. You start to think about how much better, um, how much better things would be without you around, so. And it's a thought that really goes through your head. It's a real thought, and you're not the only guy who has it. So right. take me back to that day or that moment. Where, and how did, you, how did that manifest? What did you do? Um, I thought that I was, uh, you know, going to be playing in the game against the Jaguars after the bye week. Yeah. I thought I was going to be playing in that game. Long story short, I injured a different part of my foot um, during that week of practice. And... Uh, you know, it just, I mean, it just knocked the wind out of my sails, you know. Um, I mean, I was already frustrated enough going through the injury and, you know, trying to fight through it and that kind of thing. And, you know, to have that kind of setback, I mean, as you can imagine, it was pretty, uh, it was pretty severe for me at the time, for sure. And you said you didn't know you had a mental illness that right. you're diagnosed with now, which is what? What were you diagnosed with? Uh, severe depression. Depression. And mm -hmm. it's a real thing. It's not, dude, I'm sad, I'm walking around, I'm sad, I'm bummed out. It's something really deep and really you needed a, you needed a help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I mean, I <clears throat> realized, you know, obviously that's not fair to my wife or my daughter. And, uh, you know, that's when I, you know, I decided to get help, not just for myself, but more so for my family. It takes a lot of courage to come out and talk about that publicly. It takes <laughs> a lot of courage to talk about yourself like that. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. I, I never really saw it that way. I know people... 
you know, I always use that, you know, courage, courage word, you know, call me courageous, that kind of thing. But I just see it as a, a guy sharing a story. I don't think anything's different between me talking about depression and someone talking about overcoming cancer or something like that. Right. I think you're probably right. Have you had anyone come up to you and say, hey, Joe, thanks a lot for doing oh, that? Oh, yeah. yeah? Especially, especially in Michigan. You know, I'm from Michigan. Uh -huh. We were back there this off season. So especially in Michigan. I've been, um, I've been kind of you know, doing the music thing out here. So, uh, but I have, you know, I have seen people, but most of my afternoons and evenings are spent at band practice. So. All right, good for you. I know you've been doing music. You were on with us. So I hope that's going well. It's got a little yeah. group put together. Yeah. We, we're out of time. We're going to plug the, um, the leadership awards that you will be at. There it is next week, April 26th. Actually, that's the night of the draft, mm -hmm. erasing the stigma. And where is that? Uh, somewhere in Los Angeles. Okay, I don't know. Joe, good I don't job. Know exactly where. <laughs> good job, Joe. That's great. But where's your band going to play next? Somewhere, somewhere in, in Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. I knew it. All right. Joe Barksdale, Joey Barksdale, as we heard, you know, big pouncy say, Mike pouncy say.